myocarditis might actually not be that bad for a young male, according to some experts. And, and I laugh. It's not funny, but I laugh because my goodness, like, are you kidding me? These are some wild times in the way of healthcare. And what we're going to discuss today is two difference in opinions when it comes to this topic. And we're going to see how different it actually is based on different news sources. And let me tell you, this is unbelievable. And this is why it's so hard to actually know the truth when it comes to health news today, because you can go to all of these different news sources based off their, their, their political agenda, based off the narrative they're trying to push out there. You're going to find wildly, wildly different opinions, which of course, if you're the general public, makes it almost impossible to know the truth because of course you're not digging deep into the science. But let's discuss this in just a moment. Before we get started, I'm Dr. Nick Zorowski and welcome to the channel. Be sure to subscribe, hit that notification bell. And you want to hit that notification bell because otherwise you won't know when my new videos come out. And then also you want to go to www.drz.tv to learn about all my new natural health videos. And quite frankly, it's a platform where I can put videos like this, which very well may be taken down off of YouTube and I can put it there and I don't have to worry about anybody censoring me. So go on over to my website. If you want improve your health naturally. Now, pediatric cardiologists explain myocarditis and why your teen should still get the COVID shot. And this is by CNN Health. Now, here's the thing is I read a lot of news and I can tell you, I can almost predict the narrative that will be coming from the news piece based off the news source. Now, let me remind everybody here, health is not about politics. Health is not about what political, um, side you're leaning on, whether you're Republican or Democrat, health is about science. And I will break this to you now. If you think that Dr. Fauci is the ringleader of all things scientific, well, I'm sad to say your heart will be broken because he is not. <laughs> and though he can go on TV and say to disagree with Dr. Fauci is to disagree with science, that is a load of garbage. And I hope that you don't believe that. Now, in this article by CNN Health, I pretty much knew the line they were going to tow here because, I mean, I knew that as soon as I saw Dr. Fauci's face, CNN had got the massage oils out and they had taken good care of him because that's what they would do. Now, in this article, they talk about basically how the, new, the news about a potential link between COVID-19 shot and cardiac ailment in young people may be striking fear in the hearts of some parents, but pediatric cardiologists have a message for these parents. COVID-19 should scare you more, a whole lot more than the vaccine. Now, this is crazy because first of all, I am so sick of these outlets trying to scare the living hell out of people when it comes to COVID. Literally, there are so many people that are afraid to leave their homes still to this day, especially elderly who don't know any better, who don't know the truth, that don't have the ability to sit back and read the science and interpret and understand it. They trusted these news sources because they've been around for a long time and now they're just spewing nonsense and garbage, okay? The, the statement that pediatric cardiologists cardiologists in vast numbers are making these claims is absolutely false. They probably have a couple that contribute to the network and they ask them their opinions and their opinions, of course, have to toe the line for whatever narrative they're trying to push. This is how these things work. Okay. The, the idea that there's just massive amounts of these doctors out there stating this one thing is false. Just like the idea that there's massive amounts of doctors out there that are all backing Dr. Fauci's opinion is also false. There's a huge majority of that them that do not. Okay. And you have to understand that. And, you know, even to say something like COVID-19 should scare you more and then to come back and make another statement, a whole lot more. I mean, come on, give me a break. Now, and these doctors should know, the article goes on to say, they've treated young patients who've contracted this heart ailment after the vaccination, and it's called myocarditis inflammation of the heart muscle, and they've also treated young patients with COVID-19, and there's simply no comparison between the two, they say. Myocarditis sounds scary, but there are mild versions of it, and in almost all cases among vaccinated young people, their ages 16 to 24, the symptoms have gone away quickly. Now, here's the thing. This is ridiculous to think that myocarditis is acceptable. Like, if you were to say, like, Dr. Zorowski, we're going to give your son, this shot, 
We're not responsible for anything that happens. We want you to understand that you're going to sign this waiver and say, hey, we're not responsible for anything that happens. You're making the decision to use this. This is cleared by the FDA under emergency use. Um, and uh, we hope you, and you have to be willing to accept all responsibility and understand you can't come back and sue us if anything goes wrong. And this, there's a good chance that this shot is going to give your son uh, uh inflammation in his heart muscles, but don't worry about a thing. Could you please sign this and let's do the vaccine? I'd be like, are you freaking nuts? Are you crazy? Give me a break. How in the world could you think that this is a good idea? Now, we have to understand, according to the CDC's own data, the risk of death of a young individual contracting COVID is next to none. If you round it out, it comes to 0%. Okay, So we have to make sure we understand the true risk factors. And this is according to the CDC. This is not me just you know, speaking wildly. This is not me just riffing off the cuff here. This is according to the CDC. Now, this is CNN's opinion of this particular matter. Okay, And mind you, opinion because th there's hardly any truth in what many of these new that news outlets say it's their opinion i want to go to a piece over here by the defender and uh, hopefully this video doesn't get pulled down because the last time i covered something by the defender they pulled it down almost instantaneously the defender actually is a um is a news source that is um they have a lawsuit against multiple multiple of these tech platforms for um going and taking and censoring their con their content, their information, when in fact they were right about multiple, multiple things. And as you guys know, like there is so much information that has been censored that has been true all along. And we're just finding that out. And so um, th there's so many people that would tell me before the things that I was stating to them were, were dangerous and that they were untrue and that they weren't factual. And then now we're, f we're finding out that many of these things were in fact true. Once again, if I speak, I always do my due diligence to make sure I read about the topic before I go speak on it. I don't ever riff off the cuff. I will not talk about the topic if I'm not sure in what I am saying. So for all the people who attacked me many, many times over the past two years over anything COVID-19, understand that I always did my due diligence. Now, according to the Defender, during a June 10th, U.S. Food and Drug Administration hearing to consider what data the agency would need in order to extend emergency use authorization of COVID-19 vaccines for children under 12. The CDC disclosed it was aware of a total of 475 cases of myocarditis or pericarditis in patients 30 years and younger. Okay. The other topic here that's very important to discuss, of course, that we're not going to have any honest conversations about. And please understand the conversations about you know, the shot is wildly dishonest. I mean, it's pretty much get it, get it, get it, get it. It doesn't matter if you've already had it. There's no science uh, that is looking into this right now. They just don't care enough. They literally just tell you to get it and it's for everybody. We know that it doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't matter if it's a particular medication. It doesn't matter if it's a type of food. We know that you cannot blanket the whole population with one thing and expect it to work for everybody. So that right off the bat, if you just have an ounce of common sense, you know that this is not a scientific um, approach to overcoming this issue but you could because you can't blanket the population with something thinking everybody will have favorable outcomes at the very least if you're being honest you're going to go okay look we have to rule out the people with these problems and rule out the pro the people who have these genetic variances we have to rule out people who have reacted poorly to things of this nature in the past you go and you segment out the people who aren't going to do well with it and then of course you make decisions based off that you don't just go oh this is good for everybody blanket everybody kids who cares uh already had uh covid who cares just do it you know that that's wildly inappropriate the CDC identified 226 reports that might meet the agency's working case definition of myocarditis and pericarditis following the shots. Dr. Tom, I'm not going to say his last name, how about just Dr. Tom S., Deputy Director of the CDC's Immunization Safety Office, said during the meeting there had been a higher than expected number of cases of heart inflammation amongst young people recently 
vaccinated with their second dose of mRNA vaccine. Um, the CDC data showed 196 reports of myocarditis and pericarditis among 18 to 24 year olds through May 31st compared with an expected range of between 8 and 83 cases. Among 16 to 17 year olds, 79 cases of myocarditis and pericarditis were reported through May 31st. The expected rate amongst people of this age group is between 2 and 19 cases. Dr. S. said during his presentation. Dr. S. also said that the CDC's findings were, all, were mostly consistent with the reports of rare cases of heart inflammation that had been studied in Israel and reported by the U.S. Department of Defense earlier this year. This week, the defender reported on a 19-year-old college freshman who died of complications from a heart transplant after developing myocarditis following her second dose of Moderna vaccine. Now, here's the thing that's so interesting about this is that, you know, I take care of a lot of people, a lot of people in healthcare. And recently, one of the nurses I take care of said to me, the number one reason that they're having people come in their hospital at this point in time is due to Poor reactions of the COVID-19. I went to another healthcare professional. I was getting um, I was getting healthcare administered to me. I went to this professional and I said, I was talking to him about you know just COVID in general. And he goes, Yeah, the hospitals are empty. And I said, Yeah, you know what? Uh, some some uh, of the uh, people are telling me in the hospitals is that. And he goes, The number one reason that people are coming in is because of poor uh, poor reactions due to the vaccine. I said, Yeah. I said this one uh, this one. Um, uh, nurse was telling me that in their unit, literally in their unit, they had somebody who was paralyzed from the waist down after getting the vaccine. How crazy is that? Okay. Right. And we don't hear about any of this stuff. You'll never hear about any of this stuff. And it's actually wildly censored when it's brought up. And so this is something that, um, it, it, that needs to be discussed. And so it's not me that just sees this. I'm see, hearing this from health professionals all around me about all the negative events. And this is just, I mean, this is just short term. Imagine what could potentially happen long term, right? Now, the Defender also reported this week on a 21-year-old student who developed myocarditis also after receiving the second dose of Moderna vaccine. According to the latest data from the CDC Vaccine Adverse Events Reporting System, there has been 900 cases of myocarditis and pericarditis among all age groups reported in the U.S. following COVID vaccination between December 14, 2020 and June 4, 2021. Of all 900 cases reported, 533 cases were attributed to Pfizer, 331 to Moderna, and 32 to Johnson Johnson. Now, here's the thing. If we were aware that this was going to happen prior, this probably wouldn't be that big of a deal. But this is a surprise. This is a little surprise uh, symptom that's showing up. And the question is, is how many more surprise symptoms are going to start showing up? Because I don't take heart inflammation lightly. I don't know, you know, maybe it's something you, you don't think is a big deal. I mean, uh, it, hit that thumbs up button if you agree with me that heart inflammation is something that's pretty serious. I mean, you kind of need your heart to live. Last month, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration expanded Pfizer's emergency use authorization to include 12 to 15-year-olds who are now receiving the vaccine. Last week, Moderna filed an application with the FDA and the EU. UA approval of its vaccine for 12 to 17 year olds. The FDA has received three different petitions, Children's Health Defense, Informed Consent, Action Network, and a group of 27 prominent health experts and scientists asking the agency to restrict the vaccines for children or to suspend all use of these shots until further safety studies have been completed. And that's the big thing is that most healthcare professionals are understanding that there is a complete lack of safety studies. When you look at these different hospital systems, obviously all the healthcare professionals that I talk to, it's a huge problem because they are unwilling to actually get the shot themselves, many of them. Now, I'm not saying all of them across the board, many of them. But one was saying that in their hospital system, which is one of the largest in Michigan, that the overwhelming majority of people were not getting it. And so the hospital system's got a problem on their hand because they actually are like really pushing for everybody to get the shot. And most of the healthcare professionals are seeing what's happening. They're going, nah, I'm good. I'll hold off on that. But uh, obviously, the healthcare systems don't like that, but there's nothing they can do about it. They're really trying to twist people's arms into getting it, but 
it's the, the, the professionals are seeing firsthand what could potentially happen. Once again, lack of good safety studies are out there. So therefore, we're going to have surprise symptoms and, and we're going to have to see what happens. There's a lot of people saying not good, but of course, we're just not getting the truth and a honest and balanced conversation about this, okay? And some people go, well, Dr. Zorowski, you're not balanced either because you're coming off saying all these things, you know, about how there's potential problems. I am because you know what? It is the balance that the general person needs. You can go and find um, across the board on most of these mainstream media outlets that you shouldn't even think. You shouldn't even, you know, fire up a brain cell to determine whether or not you should get it. They just saying, get it. You don't, don't, don't worry about it. You should just go get it. And then of course, most businesses are following uh, the footsteps. And I honestly think that that should be illegal on so many different levels for a business to mandate that somebody gets a shot. I mean, that's the, that's the actual company practicing medicine. That is wildly inappropriate. And in fact, they should be held responsible as a doctor and they should also be held, should be forced to have malpractice insurance if they're recommending healthcare to people, which I had mentioned in another video. So here's the thing is that you have to always make your own decisions. And I recommend that you don't just listen to me. I recommend that you don't listen to all these other media systems out there. I recommend that you do your own due diligence and you make the best choice that's right for you. If you decide that the vaccine is right for you, then by all means, you know what to do. If you decide it's not for right for you, then you, of course, make that decision. But you don't need somebody trying to twist your arm and telling you you should do it. Otherwise, you can't go on an airplane or you can't participate in your career or you can't participate in regular daily life. Okay, that's really, really unacceptable. And you have to understand the uh, um, risk factors that come along with it. As I mentioned, if you told me that this was the risk factor for my son, I'd be like, I don't think so. Not a chance. Absolutely not a chance because this is the problem now. Some heart inflammation now. What could there be in the future? And you might say, well, Dr. Zorowski, you don't know. And that's right. I don't know and either do you. So that's why you have to have some critical thinking here. And the overwhelming majority, according to CNN, of these pediatricians are saying, Oh, you're better off getting it than not getting it. And that's not true. That's wildly false. So we have to understand that too and understand they're towing the line here. They're, you know, uh, trying to fulfill a narrative. And I don't know what the benefit to them is other than the fact that they are funded by these very companies. Look up who funds these news outlets, these news organizations, if it wasn't for these massive pharmaceutical companies, legacy media like CNN, MSNBC, Fox News, many of these places wouldn't even exist because it is big pharma that pays their bills. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Put your thoughts in the comments below and check out some of my other videos on the channel.